Hey guys, welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm gonna to teach you guys three different ways to tape drywall, and they're my three preferred ways. In my opinion, the three best ways. So we're not necessarily talking about the methods you use to apply mud to the tape or get the tape onto the wall. We're just talking about what tape and mud to use and you know the most DIY friendly way to do it. Okay, so starting with mesh tape, which I think is the most DIY friendly uh, tape to use if you can find the end of the roll. <laughs> but yeah, good old mesh tape. As long as you use the right kind of mud, it is a really easy and user-friendly way to tape drywall, right? You know, you just apply the stuff, tear it off. It's pretty nice and easy. It sticks to the wall by itself. The downsides are, if you have a tendency to use this stuff too often and in the wrong places, under the wrong conditions, with the wrong muds, the wrong muds being air drying muds as opposed to setting muds, you do run the risk of having it crack on you occasionally. And um, you're only as good as your last job, and if your last job has callbacks because of cracks from using the wrong materials, well, your name's gonna be mud. Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> Time for me to mix up some 20 minute. So even though I literally just made a video showing that you can, in fact, use mesh tape with all purpose on a small patch, I'm still not gonna do it. I'm still gonna at least show you guys the actual right way to do stuff. So what we have right here is a bag of 20 minute. You know, I highly recommend having some quick set on hand. They do sell small bags of it. So if you wanna use mesh tape, get a small bag of quick set from somewhere and, um, and use it because it'll do the job better. It's just better. -er. Sorry guys, <laughs> I don't have the best explanation for it right this second. But basically, yeah, if you're gonna do it, do it right. If you're gonna use mesh tape, quick set's right. Are we still talking about this? I'm sorry. Let me get this mixed up so I can actually get it on the wall and move on to those next tapes. Okay, that's gonna be good enough. You don't have to get every lump out of it. You just don't want dry clumps. The lumps, the wet lumps will get worked out on the wall. If you're using something like 20 minute or even shorter, your priority is to get this on the wall. So first and foremost, the most important thing is to make sure that you actually have mud in the joint. That's why I'm doing this kind of hokey, like inexperienced looking way of wiping the mud. What I'm actually trying to do is force the mud into the crack. And I'm not pushing super hard on the tape, by the way. If I was pushing super hard on the tape, I would be cutting it or sliding it around or getting the fibers loose. But once, once you get, once you know that it's full of mud, then you can start to coat it. So now I'm just gonna give it a quick coat over the whole thing. And some of you guys might be confused here why I'm doing this, but over the whole thing. But if you want it flat, you gotta go over the whole thing. That's just the way it is. I'm just trying to find a little extra mud, not go over it in all sorts of weird crisscross directions. Feather your edges. And then finish passes. Now that one didn't work out. I'm just gonna leave it because it needs more coats anyways. No, I'm not. It's not wide enough. First pass is roughly about six inches past the tape at most. This is just to embed the tape and get mud in the joint. So this one is now done in terms of like, I've showed you how to tape it and we can get on to the next methods. So the next tape we are gonna be using is FibaFuse. I think this is a really good product for DIY. It really splits the line between, you know, longevity and ease of use. And I'll explain why as I do it. But basically this is a lot kind of like a bounce dryer sheet. That's what it looks like. Uh, it feels a little bit stiffer but it's the same kind of idea, this like woven strands of fiberglass going in every single direction. 
So if you're wondering why this wall looks a little crazy, it's because I took my fest tool to it. There was already a patch here, as you can see by this tape, and I wanted to bring the surface down a little bit to the old drywall so that when I do this patch, it's not just like a patch on top of a patch and the wall's now built out a quarter inch. When using Fibafuse, you can use quick set, you can use regular mud. So right now, I'm using just taping mud. You can also use all-purpose or all-purpose light. Again, quick sets work. So here's why this stuff is so user-friendly. Basically, as long as you have your mud thin enough, you want to thin it down because if it's too thick, it's going to be hard to get it out. Let's get you guys a little closer so you can really see this. What I love about this stuff is the way the mud comes through it. So this stuff gets embedded. The same way mesh tape actually gets embedded with mud, you know, paper tape sits on top of the mud and fuses with it because it's like paper and glue, but this stuff becomes one. So what you wanna make sure of is that you use a shallow angle of your knife and that your knife isn't too new. It should have some kind of slightly rounded over edges so that it's not tearing it. But what I love is the way the mud just comes right through this stuff and it sits really flat on the wall. It barely builds it out. I don't think it's quite as strong as paper tape and it doesn't have a crease in the center so you can't fold it. But I love the way this stuff just fully embeds with the mud. What's so great about that is that it really helps eliminate blisters. That's what I really like about it. That's why I think that it's more user friendly than paper tape. Paper tape is way easier to get blisters. So it kind of has properties of mesh tape and paper. A little bit of both. I think it's a great product. One of the reasons I don't use it is because I have no problems with paper. And the other reason is because it makes your fingers really itchy. At least the old stuff used to. I actually haven't even bought a roll of this stuff except for the really wide ones for like plaster repair. I haven't even bought a roll of this stuff for like 10 years. And back then it wasn't time tested. We didn't know if it actually held it up the test of time, but people use this stuff all the time. They have been for like at least a decade. And I've heard some really good things on it. So I'd say that it is now time tested and definitely a viable product, but not having a crease in the center makes it harder to use for corners. So it's a bit of a one trick pony in my opinion, as that it can only be used for taping flat stuff, not corners. But anyways, I love the way it embeds. It's so nice that way. And the other thing that's really nice about this stuff is it's not paper tape, so it's not subject to the same kind of lifting and moving and weird stuff. So you, we can actually go right ahead and coat this right now. And now that I've actually bought a roll of the stuff, you might start seeing it in my videos a little bit more. Seriously, I've, the only reason I wasn't using it is because I just didn't have a roll because I just, didn't feel like buying a roll because paper works for me. I didn't need it. But I do like the way you can use air drying muds and coat it the same day without having to worry about it. It's really good for that. There we go. I think we can leave that, let that, well, dry. Okay, this one's done. And now it is time to get to Old Faithful, my personal favorite, paper tape and taping mud, or depending on where you live, it might be all-purpose mud. But tried and true, love this one. I have no reason to switch. Okay, quick little prep here. But we're looking pretty good. All right, good old paper tape. So as long as you're making sure that you actually get Again, the joint's full. I feel like I've said that so many times because I'm filming like three videos at the same time. As long as you get your joints full with this stuff, paper tape is awesome. That's not at all what I was gonna say. What I was going to say is as long as your joints are full and you're just taping by hand like this with mud that's not too thin down, you don't have to pre-fill like how I do in most videos. A little more there. I'll often do, you know, the two parallel pieces at the same time. Don't know why I even coated those other ones yet. <clears throat> when you're filming a video, sometimes you do things that don't make sense because your brain is occupied. 
trying to make the video instead of trying to do the task. Now let's explain this a bit more. So the thing that's tricky about paper tape is for one, you don't want to wipe all the mud out. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make is they wipe all of the mud out. So I'm actually leaving like half a mil of mud underneath here. And the other thing that happens to a lot of people is they get voids under the tape because they haven't put the mud on evenly. So there's two reason voids can happen. One is you haven't put the mud on evenly and there's just pockets where there's no mud. That's probably the most common one. And you know, more or less as common is just wiping all the mud out. Like I mentioned, when you wipe all the mud out, there's nothing, there's no glue under the tape anymore. But yeah, I like this method the best because paper tape is versatile. It's got the crease so you can actually do corners with it. There's no switching out. Once you're proficient with paper tape, I think it's the best product. I also, again, personally think it's a little stronger than Fiber Fuse. I have no research to back that up, just personal opinion and experience. And because, well, what's drywall made out of? Made out of paper. I like using similar materials. You know, what's inside drywall? Well, it's a gypsum based filler. This is a gypsum based filler too. So, you know, we're using paper and gypsum based fillers. I think when you're using similar materials, you get the best results. That's why I do it this way. Anyways, there we go. Taping drywall with good old fashioned paper tape and taping mud for all purpose. I saved the best for last. That's it. The only downside to this uh, between mesh tape and fiber fuse and this is paper tape has to be coated a little bit thicker. Jeez, you guys can't even see me. There I am. Um, paper tape has to be coated a little bit heavier to hide. It can be a bit harder to hide for some people, but that's about it. And that concludes three different ways to tape drywall. They're the three best ways in my opinion. And hopefully you guys got something out of this. So now you got more tools in your toolkit or if you're new to taping drywall, now you know the general products we like to use, how they're used, and you have an idea of how you might want to choose to tackle that patch instead of just watching one video that's like, this is the only way to patch drywall. No, there's a lot of ways to do it. Here's three of them. Anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Hopefully you guys got something out of this video. I hope your project's going well and I'll see you in the next video.